Oh yeah, we're talking about it. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Now, I jumped into Melissa Jade's live last night for a few minutes, and they were talking about a video that Watch the Obsession posted. Now, I don't watch this channel. I don't have anything against her, just for some reason, my eyes and focus never go to her videos, so I don't really know a lot about the kind of coverage that she's doing on this case. The only thing I do know is that she claims to have students of the University of Idaho, from what I'm understanding, frat kids, frat guys from the University of Idaho speaking to her. I don't know if they are like Ethan's frat brothers or just a, you know, a fraternity that she's talking to. I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but her most recent video, and I will have the link for it in the description box. Mind you guys, it takes her almost 22 minutes to get to this entire point that I'm about to relay right here. According to what her, so say, source informed information is, the quote unquote exculpatory evidence that Bethany Funk apparently has in this case that the defense team desperately, you know, desperately wants spoken out is that at the time that Dylan saw what she saw, you know, that weird description that no one believes that a person that age said about being clad in black and all these things. Apparently, Bethany also saw this exact same thing, but out of her bedroom window. Now, this is a picture of the house. This right here, this bottom window with the curtain slightly open. I have noticed that most of the pictures of this house is slightly open in like all of them. But this is Bethany's. Okay, so according to what these frat people or these University of Idaho students are telling the girl on the Watch the Obsession channel is that the way that Bethany saw this man in black out of her window was as if they were walking around the side of the house to go across the parking area, like towards Queen. Which really just towards Queen could literally just mean like this, because this is actually Queen. This is actually Queen. This is not King Road. Honestly, this case is mistakenly, you know, at King Road, but logically and for all the maps, this is this is Queen that this house is actually on. King is that intercepting road off to the edge. But that doesn't make sense to me for, for multiple reasons. For one, if both of them saw something, I mean, I understand only one thing is needed for PCA. Okay, I get that point. I get it. But if both of them saw the exact same thing, then why wouldn't they just go ahead and put that in the PCA? Or, or why wouldn't they have just said that from the beginning with as secretive as they were trying to be about the roommates? Why wouldn't they have just said both of them woke up, something woke them both up, and they both saw the exact same description of a person? Why wouldn't they have just said that? And another thing that's weird to me is that according to the way that the PCA is written... And again, you can only take that with so much salt. Up until his arrest, they had still not figured out the entrance and exits that were taken. Now, they could have at this point. I don't know. They haven't given any new information at all since Brian's arrest. But they had no idea which direction the assailant came in or out of the house. Because, again, I've said this I don't even know how many times. The canines found no blood trail outside of the home which made it extremely difficult for the police to be able to figure out the ins and outs. And also from what we're understanding, there's nothing that leads in between the crime scenes inside of the house either, which makes it even more difficult for them to have figured out the way this person or persons came in and out this house. But the PCA is making it seem as if the way that Dylan saw the person walking across her door would mean that the person would have exited the house towards the back. Back here, where the, the back slider is. Okay, this way. So why would you take the back slider to come right back in front of the house? Why wouldn't you have just tried to go in through the front door? Unless, you know, it was actually locked. Because I don't think we've ever gotten verification 
on if that front door was locked or not. And I mean, honestly, I don't know if they could ever verify that. I really don't know if they ever could. But I don't understand why they would, you know, come out the back slider and then come around the side of the house. That would almost make it seem as if the car would have been like over here on Queen somewhere and not way back here. You know, like a lot of people thought, because why would you take a long way around a house and take the longest way possible to get back to your vehicle if you're parked back here? Instead of if you're parked back here, just take this out this way and hike your butt up there. I mean, if you just ninjaed your way through a three-story house, taking out four people with a manual blade, you obviously got energy to go up a little bitty hill and get back to your car. So I don't really honestly know how I feel about this information. If it's true, and Brian's team is sitting here claiming that it's so, say, exculpatory. And, you know, people can argue the definition of that word all they want to. I'll just go ahead and pop the definition for it actually right up here on the screen. You know, a lot of this kind of goes back to some of those rumors that we originally heard about the possibility that there was multiple people, that there was somebody else outside while noises and things were going on inside of the house. This is what's bad about this gag order. I mean, it's not honestly shocking that, you know, this information is coming out. I'm surprised it took this long, honestly. But even in this... You know, the sources or whoever it is that Watts is talking to, they're all claiming that anyone who was close to Bethany and Dylan at that university just don't talk to them at all anymore. Like, they've basically just disappeared off the planet. And I mean, maybe some sort of witness protection, but couldn't be too protected because we've seen Bethany at, you know, baseball games. And now there's rumors that she's apparently engaged now. So they're, they're not living, you know, too privately, but they sure are living privately enough to where these kind of things are still coming out and neither one of them are able to make any statements towards it. But then again, on the other hand, considering this eight hour gap in between the so say time of the incident and the 911 call, this would definitely, if this is true, put the blame for that on both of them, on Dylan and Bethany. Because we also have to remember here that we're being told that the suspect vehicle number one left the neighborhood at 420 in the morning, but that the police are putting the end time of the incident at 425 a.m. based on Dylan and Bethany's phones. And that is in the PCA. That's five minutes past the vehicle leaving the area. So this would really almost allude to Dylan seeing something, Bethany seeing something, ain't no way in hell they didn't hear something, and the information that the police are using from their phones that puts the timing five minutes past the car leaving is most likely them discussing what they just heard and saw while still not doing a damn thing and not calling 911. And if they were discussing it with themselves... Because whatever's on their phones that puts it at that 425 mark is not them discussing what outfit they're going to wear the next time they go out. They wouldn't be using that in the timeline for the incident if it was not related to the incident itself, guys. So if there's proof on their phones that they were discussing the situation in depth with each other, was trying to get a hold of the other roommates like we're hearing they apparently were, and they still didn't call 911. I'm pretty sure that they both are aware of the criminal charges that could possibly be put on them. And there's a big possibility that most people in this situation have been correct. That in order for them to not get in trouble for not calling 911 in a timely manner in this entire eight hour gap and po quite possibly even getting away with whatever actual reason was the cause for the eight hour gap is for them to testify against Brian. Which if that ends up being the case, to me that's just sketchy. But I don't know. As usual, there's more than one way to look at this possible scenario. So what do you guys think? Is there any legitimacy 
to this possibly have you guys heard this already have you guys watched this video already i just i just don't know why if this is true this wouldn't have already come out like if they could verify that they saw the exact same person in the exact same description wouldn't the state deem that more concrete evidence and be trying to push that against the defense as much as humanly possible? Unless they're not because somehow they've deduced that the person that Bethany saw and the person that Dylan saw, while they might have, you know, been dressed the same, there might've been something that was, you know, very distinctively different to show that they were two different people because that is still a very, very big possibility here. I'm almost wondering if maybe Steve, which he probably has already heard this, this could be one of the reasons why he's so open to the fact that somebody and something else could be going on here. But I don't know. Those are just my thoughts based on this little tidbit that is now going around. But again, and as always, I want to know what you guys think. That is it for now. See y'all.